So Season 4 has just dropped for Modern Warfare, and it's made a big load of changes as well as added an incredible amount of new content to the game. There's been the addition of new weapons, new game modes, as well as an all new ground war map, Barraquette Promenade. This map is solely available for ground war, and has lifted right out of the war zone map. This video is going to serve as an introduction, review and guide to this map. I'll include a showcase of this map's layout and design, how best to play the map in order to maximise your kills, as well as my thoughts on what this map is like to play. Timestamps are in the description for each section of this video. Now this map is incredibly different to the others you can find in Grand War. Cover is minimal, the layout is very simple and you've got very little space to actually fight in. This reduced size means that you can only play on Promenade in a 32 player sized lobby. Rather than the normal 32 versus 32 player teams, the numbers are halved to 16 versus 16 players. You'd think this would slow the pace of the gameplay, but my god is that not the case. This map is so tiny that you feel there's always a group of enemies just around the corner from you. Having to make use of such a limited amount of cover makes you feel so much more vulnerable, because you are. The sparse and small environment means players are always seconds away from death, meaning this map can feel incredibly fast paced. The linear design also makes flanking a big challenge as there's very little room to manoeuvring. The end result is that you have most players on each team clashing in a very small area of the map. You end up with two walls of players pushing each other backwards and forwards across the map for the majority of the game. It's definitely a more static gameplay than traditional ground war, in the sense that you're not covering that much ground, but the intensity and constant fight to adjust your position to make use of the pathetic cover this map offers you really makes it unique. The first thing to note about this new map is that it's incredibly simple. It's almost bullet straight and pretty narrow. On the left and right side of the map are roads. These are incredibly open and there's very little around that will offer you any form of protection. The only cover available is burned out vehicles, cargo crates, as well as the odd rubbish bin and roadblock barrier. The entire centre channel of this map is separated by walls on either side, so that those on the roads cannot shoot into the centre flow of players. This area has much more in the way of cover. There's small huts, low walls, as well as a variety of smaller objects like crates which you can shelter behind. There's one road across the centre of the map that cuts across the entire middle section, where you can hop from one side of the map to the other. There's also some small entrance points between these three channels that you can use to change lanes quickly. The only other features of this map of the spawn areas and the monument at the north end of the map. If you see an opportunity to loop behind enemy lines, then this is the best opportunity you can possibly hope for. You'll most likely end up behind numerous players spraying into the mess where the two teams meet, making them easy kills for you. If you've got the range, hopping up on top of objects can let you shoot over cover in order to rack up some easy kills. If you're set up for close range, sticking to the edges of the main combat area will allow you to drop enemy players from cover. In this sort of position, you're less likely to get demolished by the constant spray of gunfire from the enemy team. I cannot stress how important it is to make the most of the little cover this map offers you. More often than not, you won't have all the cover that you want, so you need to think about how you can use it effectively. Try to avoid getting pinned down in one area, or running headlong at enemy lines repeatedly. Don't be afraid to switch up your approach by changing lanes and using a more calculated playstyle. This incredibly simple layout makes combat very different to traditional ground war maps. This means you need to approach it a little differently if you want to have some success on this map. For the best results, you either want to commit to a close range build designed for close quarters pushing, or you want to make the most of the long lines of sight this map has and use either a sniper or a long range build of an AR or LMG. Whatever you go for, you'll only be able to get so far from the absolute chaos that dominates this map. Whichever option you pick, you do not want to be charging straight at the enemy objectives, as this just doesn't work. You need to take a tactical approach due to the meagre amount of cover around. Make the most of the three lane system this map is built on. Moving between them will allow you to take on smaller groups of enemy players. No matter how good you are, you're not going to be able to wipe out the countless enemies that amass in the centre. The trick to this map is recognising how the layout funnels players and where players are gathering at any point. Once you know where the hordes of enemies are, you can work around this to exploit the advantages of your own playstyle. This map also sees a greatly increased use of explosives, due to the small nature in which it forces players close together. For this reason, running a trophy system is a very good idea. It'll save you from the constant explosives and tactical grenades that seem to cover this map at all times. For the same reason, I'd recommend running Battle Hardened and EOD, although you can live without these as other perks may be more important to you. 
You also tend to find snipers sitting at the back of the map, watching the roads on the edges. If you've got a sniper rifle, they're easy targets, but if you're not packing the range, then be careful of these players. There are also APCs on this map, but they're almost pointless. They can't manoeuvre properly, as they cannot get into the centre funnel of this map. Plus, the cover around it is enough that players can comfortably destroy them in a matter of seconds. The usual balance of ground war, where these vehicles represent serious threats, is totally abandoned on this map. I'm going to round off this video with my thoughts on this map. I think it really tries to do something different to ground war. It reminds me of shipment in a way, as it's pure chaos, but on a larger scale. I've seen it receive a rather large amount of hate already, both in-game as well as on YouTube. I can see why players don't like it, as at first glance it appears to encapsulate everything that you don't want in a Call of Duty map. It's small, forces players close together, there's little room to move in, and a low amount of cover. For sure, if you just run straight at the enemies and don't play with any strategy in mind, you're going to be in for a painful game. But if you change your approach and recognise that you need to change up your tactics, you can really have a lot of fun on this map. Moving between lanes, quickly exploiting an exposed flank in order to pull off a risky rush can be great fun and very rewarding. You can be very effective both at close range and long range, provided you don't mind making the most of the limited cover and can tolerate the constant mess that is the centre channel of this map. It's all about using the minimal map around you to your advantage in order to succeed. All in all, I think that this map is a great addition to the Grand War map rotation. It adds a unique element of pure madness that you don't really find elsewhere. If you can get past the linear layout and shake up your approach to meet the demands of this map, you can have both a good time and drop some impressive gameplays. Just come at it with an open mind and be careful of the explosives.